Sorry. I just apologize. Yeah. Call yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. I uh, talked about a new program that starts in two weeks. What, can you give us a little bit of a heads up of what it is? Or? That's our ceasefire program, which we've been planning on over the last um, six months or so. Uh, we expect to roll it out in the next two weeks. Chief um, Jody Hernandez, NBC Bay Area. I just want to get your um, reaction to these two reports that just came out from the Federal Monitor. Um, we understand also today that uh, civil rights attorneys are now preparing to request uh, the, the department be placed into federal receivership. Uh, what do you think of this and what could this potentially mean? Well, which, which two reports are you talking about? <laughs> um, be, be a little more specific. The, the federal monitor's reports regarding the officer involved shooting, okay. concluding that uh, the, the department did not meet up to its responsibilities okay. um, in handling those. And then Let me yesterday. Answer that, was, that one first. Okay. Um, in regards to that report, um, we have not seen the sealed version of the document. And once we've seen the document and we have an opportunity to discuss within, within the city's team, we intend to discuss some of the merits of that case with, um, with the monitor when he comes to town next week. Uh, but just to put things into context, um, we just described to you here uh, what's taken place in the city of Oakland, five murders in, in uh, 18 hours. We have 94 murders within the last um, 10 months or so. Um, if you look at some of the violence that's taken place throughout the country, the IACP um, um, uh, just released a report that states that 58,000 law enforcement officers, police officers, were feloniously assaulted last year. Okay. We have the fourth most dangerous city in America. These are challenges that my officers face every single day. We're not making up any of this stuff. That in fact, the reality of what we see here in this department or in this city each and every day. What I expect from my officers is that they rely on their training, their experience, and their good judgment to make sound decisions, to practice constitutional policing, and to make sure that they protect themselves and the citizens of Oakland. Chief, can we drop in? She, I think she had another question too, right? And, and then your reaction to this move um, and call for the department to be placed under federal receivership. Right. We, we haven't seen the documents yet. As you know, it's anticipated that they're going to file it. But let me just state that the city, the city team, much of who you see here, the city administrator, the mayor, the city attorney, myself, and my command staff, we're all working to move in the same direction, which is full compliance with something we started 10 years ago. It's not been easy, it's been challenging, but there's no one here that's ducking from the responsibility. We all want the same thing. The judge wants the same thing. I want the same thing. I want our officers to practice constitutional policing. Now, whether we have uh, fell short in certain areas, those are things that I have to continue to work on. And we're going to continue to work that, uh, regardless of whatever distractions we have. But we're one team. We're pushing in the right direction, which is to make this department a constitutionally practiced policing and a professional organization that respects the rights of others. Chief, Sorry, Kevin Drummond of Tribune. Um, what do you expect the total cost of ceasefire to be? That's the first question. Um, how does the city intend to fund it? That's the second question. And also related to that, this is all for, for city administrator uh, Santana and Mayor Kwan. What is the status of the hiring of a project manager? Uh, has there been any kind of job description to go out? Where are we with that? Because that's obviously a critical component of launching this thing. Okay, other, other than the cost of the contractors, uh, which I believe is uh, a little less than 100000 um, the other costs that are associated with that uh, are in-kind costs, which means that I assign officers of the city departments, assign people to uh, do this job um, part-time and when necessary full-time work to the extent possible is being done by our consultants from the uh, Project Safe Neighborhood Program. Okay, uh, my I don't, understanding I don't, is they're going to come back, they're going to have to come back to the council for additional funds, is what I was told. If we, have, we, I don't, we haven't even signed the first contract yet, so I'm not sure how we get beyond the first contract or the second contract. So we have to expend those uh, expend those, uh, those funds first. Before we can talk about a second contract, and that's, I'm not aware of any efforts to have a second contract. Uh, in, in regards to the program manager, um, that is something that we're looking at. I don't believe the RFP or the job announcement has been uh, provided yet, but that's something that will not impede the implementation of this, of this program because there are 
enough staff members here to get it done, or at least to get it off the ground while we await the um, hiring process to take its place. So the hiring of a program manager is not an impediment to this program getting started. All right, Angela Woodall, from the, also from the Oakland Tribune. What was, and this refers to the report that my colleague mentioned, what was your reaction <clears throat> to uh, John Burris announcing that he was going to ask for partial receivership? So not entire receivership, but only departments that he saw as problematic. Um, I don't have any comment on that. Again, uh, once we receive the documents, we will review it. As you know, by law, the city has 30 days to file a response to the to the um, to their brief, and we expect the city attorney's office to, to be filing those uh, motions uh, in response to their stuff. So I don't have any comments about whether it's partial or close compliance. Obviously, John John has his his uh, right to ask the judge because they're the ones that are filing the motion. Well, does it re do you think it reflects well on the force that he's not asking for a full receivership? I haven't I haven't seen it yet, Angela. So I'm not, I'm not going to comment on that. Chief. What are the remaining reforms of the NSA that have yet to be implemented? Well, the, the, the task that we're out of compliance with is uh, with, with, with respect to internal affairs, um, the, the preponderance of evidence that would prove or disprove that an officer was uh, allegations of misconduct was proven. Um, our, our, our early warning system, which is um, also called our iPass system, our stop data system. Uh, and the span of control, which is all being um, looked at in terms of that. Um, officer involved shootings, just to name a few. So there's probably about five tasks right now that we feel um, are still under um, consultation with the monitor. And then the one big one which hasn't been evaluated totally because it hasn't been, uh, hasn't been used in the field training program. We haven't had an academy in four and a half years. Uh, we actually have about two minutes left and I have to take off because I have a Session to attend, so I'm going to take two more questions. Well, let me just follow up with that. What have been the, what, what has been the challenge with getting those implemented? Uh, it's been a number of challenges. The, the um, issue re uh, regarding our early warning system has to do with technology, which uh, we started. We built our own system, but the system has been overloaded, and we have to look at a new system now, which takes money and time. Uh, in terms of um, the internal affairs investigation, uh, we, we're, we're working on training our staff to look at some of the issues that have um, caused us to um, not find officers um, in, 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 in compliance with some of the, the things that, that we've been doing. So there's a merit of issues. I, I can't really get into all the details right now. So well, uh, one more question. Yes, sir. Chief Pandora Sarshaw with Open North. I was wondering, how do you quantify the success rate of the next tool program? The, the, the success program? rate of the next tool next program? program? Yes. Um, well, as you know, the, the, the tip hotline is just being, being started, so we're, we don't have any data to show whether it's working or not. What we've used it for in the past is to provide information to the community, which I've gotten just a lot of feedback in terms of direct communication with members of the community that it is working, they like the communication. And now we have an opportunity to receive information back from the community, and perhaps later on we could measure whether that information has led to the... Um, reduction in violence or the solving of uh, problems. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, city administrators and community leaders. We will have Travis Scott available and also Captain Davis available. We also have Bishop Bob.